A growing portion of the top 1% are worried about a social uprising, social unrest uh, due to the growing inequality in America, which is only exacerbated by this ongoing pandemic. And so this means that there are some men, some of whom are rich, and they might be crying. I care. That's it. My You're favorite the worst. bumper. You're crazy. It's so good. It's so good. Actually, Leon mm -hmm. Cooperman, who you just saw in that bumper, will make an appearance in this story. But I'm actually going to start off with Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark Cuban has uh, long regarded himself as a libertarian, someone who truly believes in the free markets, wants as little government as possible. But now it looks like more and more people are taken to the streets because they're unable to provide for themselves and their families, right? So what is he proposing now? He's done a number of interviews where he's made similar statements recently. Let's take a quick look. You know, companies is great, but if nobody has any money to spend there, then that's a real challenge. So I personally think this is a chance, this reset is an opportunity for us to do a couple new things that four months ago I would have been totally, totally against. But now in this new world, I think we need to increase the minimum wage to $15 because I think this is the time to do it. You know, the hot job market before pushed a lot of wages up anyways. But for those people who are under um, getting paid or not getting paid enough and can't live on, on their wages, that needs to change. And I think we need a federal jobs program. We can't survive with 50 million people unemployed. And when we go back after this reset, companies are going to have, lear have learned that they can do a, just as much with a lot less. Again, Mark Cuban uh, mm -hmm. was not someone who would have advocated for these types of policies before. There is one quick caveat that you should be aware of. Um, he is flirting with the idea of running for president as a libertarian candidate, um, which, you know, libertarians don't believe any of the stuff that he just said right now or believe in any of the stuff he said right now. But either way, um, he's not the only wealthy person who's now softening on the idea of redistributing wealth to the people that money has been taken away from for decades now. As we know, it will likely be changed forever. When the government is called upon to protect you on the downside, they have every right to regulate the upside. So capitalism has changed. Second, the country is moving slowly to the left. Taxes have to go up. Quickly, if Biden wins, slowly if Trump wins, but taxes have to go up. So things like carried interest, capital gains taxes, uh, the uh, ability to roll over real estate sales tax-free, all that stuff is going to have to be eliminated, uh, for the good, by the way, okay? And that was Leon Cooperman, yeah. who just a few months ago was literally crying on cable news at the thought of a wealth tax. Mm -hmm. And now he's advocating for taxes, probably because he's scared <laughs> that there will be significant social unrest. And I've heard a lot of wealthy people, John, um, mm -hmm. talk about their fear that the country will be a full-blown socialist society. And they don't want that. Yeah. So it seems like they're willing to concede on a few things in order to prevent that from happening. Yeah, I would always love a follow-up question when people on the news say something like that. What do you think the word socialism means? Because they totally. they don't seem to know or they're not able to agree. Um, you know, I, I think it's a perfectly fine question to say to what extent is Mark Cuban being honest in that previous video or how long will he maintain the position he expressed there? If it's his honest opinion and if he stays consistent, I'm mostly fine with what he said. Obviously, we don't think it goes far enough, but I want to see more people, you know, moving to those positions. We've been saying since, you know, since the discussion around the stimulus and the, you know, what looks like it's going to be the one time UBI, that that might get people to be a little bit more open minded about some of these sorts of things. Some of them might be billionaires. And I think that you're right that in the case of Cooperman, I think that some of those more minor sort of tinkering with taxes, bringing it a little bit back to what it was like just a few years ago, is certainly going to seem more appealing than instituting any kind of wealth tax, even a very minor one, more minor than what the Democratic candidates uh, were talking about. And if they, look, if they're worried about a socialist u u utopia being created or dystopia from their point of view, um, I, it's not looking like that's likely to happen either way. If they're worried about lots of unrest, yeah, yeah, in no small part due to what they've been advocating for during the pandemic and decades of policies before it, they should be worried about that. I mean, um, 
you know, like take a look at the the history of you know, Latin and South America. Like if you wanted to create violent revolution, the best documented academic work that you can look at says create ever increasing income inequality and wealth inequality and then just wait. And eventually that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen when people feel like there is no political recourse to their issues, that they have no stake in the game whatsoever, that the government has nothing to do with them. They're going to look to alternatives and it's going to turn violent. And that should be what the government was should have been working to avoid this whole time. And if some of them are finally waking up to it, then there are policies on offer that have been suggested by some good politicians recently that could go a long way to allaying those fears. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this is an opportunity for all of these workers who have been organizing uh, to do these strikes to really understand how much power they have. I mean, we're already seeing some of these incredibly wealthy men waver on their long held free market beliefs, right? Free market. And I think what Mark Cuban touched on is important. Look, the Federal Reserve can go ahead and bail out these corporations all it wants to provide liquidity, right? And then the, co the companies turn around and they buy shares of their own stocks, essentially creating these asset bubbles. But how long, that's not sustainable. They can't do that forever. You need consumers, you need the middle class to be able to buy your products in order for your company, your business to remain sustainable. And what we're dealing with right now is this unsustainable model. People are suffering. And yeah, eventually there will be widespread social unrest and they're terrified of it. So again, the workers do need to understand what their power is here. And it is significant. Finally, I want to go to uh, Scott Minard, who is the CIO for Guggenheim. And he had some interesting statements. This was reported in Barron's. He says, as the death toll mounts, it will be used as political fodder, eventually a populist revolt to address the current massive inequality of income and wealth will happen. Consider that roughly half of all Americans had less than $500 in savings before this crisis hit. Most of these people were not prepared to weather a storm like this. And the damage that is being done to household balance sheets, let alone the damage to their confidence, is going to have long-term negative repercussions on consumption. The U.S. government's coronavirus programs or coronavirus relief programs are insufficient, misdirected, and full of unintended consequences. The Fed and Treasury have essentially created a new normal I'm sorry, a new moral hazard by socializing credit risk. The U.S. will never be able to return to free market capitalism as we know it before these policies were put in place. Fed policy is treating symptoms, the symptoms of the problem, not the source. Again, know the power that you have as a worker because C CEOs are fully aware that they would not be as wealthy as they are if it weren't for their workforce, if it weren't for the employees who show up every day and do their jobs. These are people who should have been paid appropriately, compensated fairly from the beginning. They should have had uh, the appropriate benefits. And they've been mistreated for decades now. And so mm -hmm. they're finally raising the alarm. They should have been raising the alarm. And I am not an idiot. Like, I know that this isn't about them, like, oh, out of the kindness of their own hearts, they want to do right by these workers. They want to make sure that the wealth stops being redistributed to the very top. No, right. I mean, they've loved this system for a while now. They've enjoyed it. They've defended it. But now they're realizing that it's actually putting them at risk. And that's why they're speaking the way that they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with almost everything that you said. I do think some of the billionaires have just been they've been working really hard in 2020. Jeff Bezos just worked 24 billion dollars hard and he has been appropriately paid for the great deal of effort he's put in so far this year. And that's 24 billion on top of what he was already mm -hmm. making. The pandemic has increased the amount yep. of money he's making personally, 24 billion additional dollars. Yeah, so, rise and um, grind. That's what you that's what you got to do. The Ken Klobenstein <laughs> philosophy Get that paper. That's what Jeff Bezos has been doing. He wakes up at 4.30 every morning, Anna, and he doesn't go to sleep until, well, like 10, but come on, he woke up early. Well, if he works really hard and makes a lot of money, he can certainly afford to pay his workers more um, because without them, he wouldn't be able to earn a dime. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member-only shows and specials right after they air. 
So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.